As a designer, I'm always looking at ways that I can upgrade my sites. And in this case, we're gonna take a look at micro interactions. And thankfully with Framer, we can do micro interactions and add them to our site like this in a very simple way without taking much time. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do four very basic animations or interactions. Number one is gonna be micro interactions. Number two is gonna be hover effects. Number three, page effects. And number four, scroll animations. So parallax, that kind of thing. Let's get into it. So as we take a look at some micro interactions from side of the day, we can see why interactions are so important. Now, keep in mind that all these designs are gonna be absolutely phenomenal, but we can see that there's small things like this, like don't miss a beat when it's actually beating and all these small things that can really help elevate the entire design. Now, these guys have gone above and beyond with their site. We cannot take that away, but micro interactions in this case are gonna help us a lot. And I just wanna show this site because although we're not gonna get to this level in this video, I wanna show you what we can actually achieve with something like Framer or any type of micro interaction like this. Now, if we reload this page, which is helga.ch, I'm gonna translate that to English, reload it maybe, okay, maybe not. We can see what I mean by micro interaction. This might make more sense. So we have that text that kind of appears and allows us to see the text in a, in a bit more of a smooth way. And this is gonna be something that we're going to cover in this video. So enough procrastination, let's get stuck right in. So right now we have this website here, which is something that I created in a previous video. Link is gonna be up here somewhere, but I wanna do maybe that similar, similar effect where when the breakpoint actually gets seen, I want the text to kind of appear in a very nice fashion. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do that inside of Framer, but the easiest way is gonna be if we have this section here with these two columns, if we go all the way down to effects, we can hover over up here, hover itself, press, loop, drag, or we have scroll animation, scroll speed, scroll transform, and then scroll variant as well. But in this case, I just wanna click on appear, and we want the trigger to be on appear, we want the preset to fade in, and just by adding that, we can see that if I quickly reload, we're getting something, that's for sure, but it's not exactly what we need, but at least we have that effect turned on with the trigger being on the correct section. So how do we actually make that look a little bit nicer? Number one, we have different options here by the trigger. We have on appear, on scroll, layer in view, section in view, different presets here for fade in, scale in, scale in bottom. So if I click on scale in, we can see what that means. It's gonna appear in a way that it's gonna grow. And these are all pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna be link in the description so you guys can take a look at all these different ones in a more visual way, which really helps me. But we have a lot of different options. Now it's a shame that we can't actually see what this looks like on the canvas itself. So as we're designing, we kind of get a little preview. That would be phenomenal. But in this case, I think it's fine. We can just do a fade in. And then the effect here is where we can play around with the number one, how long it's gonna take, if we wanted to increase in scale at any point, if we wanted to rotate in at any point, different skews, different offsets. And then here we have this ease and the spring. Now, this is where you can really bring your project to life. In this case, our design is only 0.4 seconds in time. But if we go ahead and increase that to maybe like four, just for us to see it, now you get what I mean, right? So we can really play around with this, make it as slow or as fast as we need. And we also have a different presets here. So we've got linear, ease in, ease in out, ease out, back in, back in out, back out. So let's play around with maybe one of them just to be a little bit ridiculous. So bounce here, we can do a pretty insane bounce. And this preview here gives us an idea of what that's gonna look like. Actually ignore the bounce. I'm gonna get rid of that and then maybe put a preset of like two seconds so that when the person, then it starts. You know, that could be nice. It gives me more of a luxurious vibe if we give it more time to load in. So that's something to keep in mind. The way that you're gonna change the effects and the timing and the transitions and all that is gonna have an effect of how the website is seen. So keep that in mind, use this power with responsibility. Now, let's take a look at some other effects that we can very simply achieve inside of Framer. So this text right here, I think is actually pretty cool where the kind of text appears in a way. So let's see if we can actually go ahead and do that. So one thing we need to keep in mind if we're gonna start layering these effects is how long we're taking with everything. So in this case, we've got the time itself is 4.3 seconds for the animation and then 2.7 seconds for the delay. So we have a total of seven seconds before the total hero animation is done. So that's gonna be quite important when we start to animate the different text effects and, and the layers and everything. So in this case, we want the text and then we want the trigger to be on appear and we have all these different 
the options here. So we have flip, we have blur, shake, all these different things. We also have scale, but my favorite one is gonna be stagger, which I've always wanted to do. And then we can delineate this by character, by word, by line, or by element. So element just gives us an idea of that by line. Let's see what line does in this case. So we're gonna wait for it to appear, seven seconds. Okay, I think we need to, it's not seeing the effect yet. So we need to delay it by seven seconds. Let's see now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so each line is being delayed by seven seconds. Not exactly what we need there. So let's see what else we can do here. Okay, so if we go back into effect, I just played around with this for a little while, but if we change it to layer in view instead of on appear, and then we change the preset to be word, and then in terms of the time, we have an element of, well, you can guys can play around with this on your own, but we have a different delay of 0 0.7 here. What happens is if we wait seven seconds for everything to load in, we can see that it starts out word by word and it feels very luxurious in a way. But if I reduce this delay, if I just get rid of that and I go back into the word here, let's see, content, play again. So that feels very nice. But in our case, in our design here, we have the word and the text that kind of appears almost at the same time and then everything else goes under it, which makes sense if we have a on appear effect. So let's see what else we can do here. We've got this effect, layer in view. Let's try back on appear. Okay, and then here we can delay it by a couple seconds if we need to, but I think it's fine just for now. Also what we can do is we can select all of them and then do the same exact effect so we have an appear, fade in, something like that. So we're attaching something to all of them and that can also be fine. But let's see what else we can do here. So if we wanted to, we could also add in parallax effects very easily inside of Framer. By adding in this frame here, and I'm gonna change it to absolute, we can move it around anywhere we want now. It doesn't have to be constrained within the the different stacks. But what I wanted to do in this case is see if we can move this element here a little bit faster than the rest of them. So what I'm gonna do just off the bat is gonna be change the scroll speed to be maybe 20% or something like that. And then we can see that it starts to scroll with us, but it's going a little bit slower. So let's do the opposite, let's do 120%. All right, so now that's kind of scrolling away from us. So you can really add in a lot of effects inside of Framer in a very simple way without too much hassle, which is fantastic. So that's great, let's move that out of the way. Now, remember to always change your different breakpoints whenever you're adding in these different animations. And actually, let's take a look at what these look like in the different breakpoints because there's no point of doing any of this if it doesn't make sense in the lower ones. So we can say that that still works and that still works as well, so that's great. So one thing I wanted to do is the hover buttons and components because that's gonna be super important. One of the best things about the framer animations and, and hovers and all that is that we can add in individual buttons that are already kind of established by framer. So hover or pressed, in this case, we wanna do hover and we can change the color to maybe be full black. And then we can add in a nice shadow. And instead of doing a simple box shadow, so I'm just gonna make this super dark so you guys can see and make it large. Well, you guys kind of get the point here. Instead of doing this, which is a, a kind of a typical shadow, which wouldn't look horrific if you went back here, right? It wouldn't look, actually we can't even see it because the stack is probably going to be. So if we go ahead and preview that, we'll see that it doesn't look horrible and we have a nice animation as well and it's kind of springing back. But what we can do instead of that box shadow is do a realistic shadow, which I very much prefer because if we go ahead and preview this, I mean, it's hard to see with the, with the colors here, but if I make this much darker, we'll see what I mean. I mean, this shadow just feels like there's a lamp on it and it's kind of showcasing that there's something going on there, which I find to be a lot nicer looking than just that simple box shadow. So in this case, this is what I really like to do for my buttons, add in as much of a realistic shadow as possible. And thanks to the realistic setting in Framer, we don't need to go into Figma and do the whole beautiful shadows plugin and all that. It just comes right out of the box, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course we have all the different settings here. If we need to be super specific with our shadow, we can also change, if we go back to the primary, the animation itself for the button. So the transition animation. So in this case, if we hover over it, we see that there's kind of like a like a smooth effect, but if I wanted our design to be a little bit slower, to kind of go in line with our entire site, 
we can see that we can do that, right? So we can be as specific with the stuff as we want, of course. But in this case, I'm gonna do physics because I like it. Damping, mass, so make it a really heavy-ish object. And then let's see what we got here. So that feels like a solid button and a half. Let's see what we can do in here. All right, so I'm getting cut off somewhere. Let's take a look. We should have no uh, 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 overflow. All right, overflow visible. Let's see now. Still getting it. Overflow visible. Now, we see that we have this super nice button and obviously this is taking a little bit long but if you guys actually take the time that's required to make this look super nice then you could make this design make a little bit more sense i want to actually fix or add in a shadow to this so you guys can see how we can do that without going into the main button component so if we go into effects here we have speed but we can add another thing on top of it another effect and here we can add in the shadow that we want so we can go realistic make it uh, let's give it a baby blue and then go pretty high. All right, so we're just gonna increase this till we can see it. I'm gonna make it a little bit blue, a little bit dark. And now let's see. Boom, crazy. Let's fix that. So scale, I don't know why that's the default, 1.1, but maybe they just do it so that you can see that there's something there. But yeah, not my, not my cup of tea. And then we're just gonna make the mass be, I don't know, something like that. Boom. That feels solid. I don't know why you would need that, but I mean, it just feels like a like a solid thing right there. All right, so that's good and all, but let's see if we add in another page. I'm just gonna add a new page, and this can be page two. We can just, yeah, leave it like that for now. And then this button can be, we can add a link here, go into our layers, click on the stack, and then we can add a link, page two, the second page. And here we can go ahead and add in a page transition. So page transitions are gonna be quite interesting because if we click on the breakpoint itself, we'll see that we also have an effects here for all page or a single page. I'm gonna go, in this case, we can go single page because there's only one page, but all pages would be cool if you had kind of a stagger or a fade out or something like that, that would make sense for all the pages. So in this case, if we just add in that and we click on this button, we'll see that it kind of fades out already, which is super nice. So we have all these different settings. So let's see, slide left, boom. Kind of like a PowerPoint in a way. Now we have all these different settings and it would make sense if you had, for example, a site that has to do with books or with different animations along the entire site that when you click on a, a link, that animation or continuity is passed on to the different page transitions. It's not just all these crazy animations and then you click a button and nothing happens and it's just blank and it changes. So it's cool that you can do all these page animations just right out of the gate, but let's see if we can make this a little longer. So five seconds for some reason. Uh, maybe not. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, maybe instead of the, let's try crossfade for a longer time. Let's see what that happens. Okay, so that's, yeah, that works perfectly well. You can delay it if you need to. You can do all the typical transitions that you're gonna be doing anyways. So that's quite a cool effect that you can do inside of Framer. So now when we go back to our example and we reload this page, maybe not the first example because that was a little bit chaotic. I mean, that was quite something, but we can see that we can add in these kind of effects and animations pretty simply in Framer. So we have this stagger animation that we see here as well. Now that's gonna be a little bit faster. In their case, we're still going with ours, but you guys can change that up to be whatever you want. We've got parallax. We've got these crazy button effects that are very nice, quite solid buttons. We've got page interactions, transitions, very slowly fading out. So we have a lot going on here and all of that in like 10 seconds it took us. Now, obviously I'm doing a video, so it's gonna take a little bit longer for us, but it's pretty simple to add in these interactions and the better that you get at using it and being more consistent with, these, with all these different interactions, then it's gonna be second nature to just add it into the different elements. And of course, if you're using components and you already have the interaction and animation in the component, you just drag it in, you already have it in your project, 
that's even faster. So this is something that can be used over and over and over, and it's gonna make your project feel and look 20 times more snazzy. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be doing so much content in 2025. You guys have no idea. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.